Benavides Jr. It's um likely that um Jose Benavides is going to be taking on Terrence Crawford October. Um, that's his brother, younger brother, um, um, David Benavides. David Benavides actually at one point in time was for like a few days or so a top ranked fighter. But that's a whole nother video. Um, Jose Benavides, 26 years old, 27 and 0 with 18 KOs. Most notable fight, most notable win of his career was a very controversial um, uh, win over Mauricio Herrera when he was just at that point in time. What? Uh, when is his birthday? Uh, 22 years old. So since then, he's had some issues. Um, he got shot in the hand. He had some um, some time off, and these fights you see right here have been undercard ESPN Plus fights. So if you don't have ESPN Plus or you haven't been watching the full undercards of ESPN, you haven't been seeing him fight. Overall, mm, his height is the is, is is the biggest advantage for him. However, speed wise. Now, 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 we're comparing him to Terrence Crawford because it's rumored that it's going to be announced soon that he's going to be taking on Terrence Crawford October the 13th in uh, Omaha for the WBO 147-pound title. I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live. Um, he's six foot two. He's fighting at 140 pounds. And looking at the resume of uh, Terrence Crawford, 33 and 0 with 24 KOs, I like Julius Ndungu. But I'm going to rate as an overall opponent. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rate. And I know you're going to say, well, Julius Ndungu was a unified champion, whatever. I'm going to rate skill-wise Jose Benavidez above him, but not by very much. Felix Diaz, yes, he's better than him. He's better than John Molina Jr. Victor Postol is nice. He's better than uh, Hank Lundy. He's better than um, Deary Jean. He's better than uh, Tumaz uh, Delorme. He's better than Ray Beltran. Gamboa at this point in time, you know, he was just too small. He's better than uh, Ricky Burns. So, looking at it, and looking at, you know, he's a naturally sized opponent. You know, he used to be at 140 pounds. That's where he fought... Uh, uh, Mauricio Herrera, meaning Jose ben, uh, Benavidez. He's got the height and he's got the youth. He's also sparred with uh, Manny Pacquiao in the past. Put it this way, he's a nice, solid 147-pound fighter for uh, Terrence Crawford. But a lot of people are going to be saying, well, you know, why is he not fighting Errol Spence and these guys? You know, it's a lot of deep politics involved with the 147-pound division. Also, this was uh, earlier this year, by the way. Yeah, I'll, I'll go full screen. Please subscribe, by the way. This is uh, Jose Benavidez right here. I'm trying to figure out when this was. This was I did a video on this. Let me let me see if I can pull it up for you guys. See when this was. But this is Terrence Crawford, you know, talking some goon shit to uh, Jose Benavidez. Obviously, you can see. Uh, let me see. Hold on. Let me type this in. Crawford versus Ben. Uh, damn it. Hold on one minute. Here it is. Let's see when we did this. I'm trying to give you a date on when this was. Where's my video? That's what we're looking for. Not that screen. It's the wrong screen. Hold on. I'm fucking up. Why is that over there? This was six months ago. Okay, so this was six months ago. This is the video right here. Focus on your fight. 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 Focus on
Focus on your fight for you not making it to your fight. Focus on your fight for you not making it to your fight. You're not gonna make it to your fight. You're not gonna make it to your fight. Another boxing with an international player here in Corpus Christi, Texas, against Australia versus USA tomorrow evening. Thank you, boy. It's about to get the pretty rounds in the Super Middleweight Division. Two battle tested fighters. If you don't have your tickets in hand, quite yet, make sure you get them tomorrow. Our tickets are still available. Our next bout to the Spain Super Middleweight Division. Hey, hey, hey. They both fought. Um, so Jose Benavidez fought Frank Rojas. This was that one round, uh, that first round stoppage uh, that we just saw on the Jeff Horn Terrence Crawford um, undercard. And then his last fight against Matthew Strode was on the Jerwin and Cajas Israel uh, Gonzalez and Gilberto Ramirez Habib Ahmed card. But he fought on the, and uh, Jesse Hart he on he fought on the on the ESPN Watch app. So, like I said, I can understand how people haven't seen these fights, you know, and they're going to be like, who the fuck was Jose Benavidez, man? Terrence Crawford needs to be fighting, you know, the winner of Danny Garcia versus Sean Porter, Keith Thurman, you know, Errol Spence. Um, they're going to do their best to keep Terrence Crawford where he is. And I understand the narrative. People are going to say it's Bob Arum's fault, blah, 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 blah. Right now, Terrence Crawford is considered like you got him and you got Errol Spence. In hardcore fans' minds, unfortunately, since Keith Thurman has been inactive, many are thinking that he don't have the hunger anymore. But in hardcore fans' eyes, Terrence Crawford versus Keith, I mean, Terrence Crawford versus Errol Spence is the biggest fight of the 147-pound division, in my opinion. That is bigger than Errol Spence versus Keith Thurman. Now, financially, Keith Thurman brings in a lot of money. Keith Thurman versus Terrence Crawford will be big. But until he comes back, rumored he's going to fight Jose Zito Lopez um, very, very soon. Could be on the Wilder versus Fury undercard. We'll see. Danny Garcia is fighting Sean Porter on September the 8th right now. With Sep, uh, it's August the 28th, 2018. Um, Adrian Broner, we don't know what he's going to be doing. You got uh, Jesse Vargas, who's taking on Tumas Delorme over on the zone. So... After Benavidez, whoever wins between Terrence Crawford and Benavidez, and yes, I am picking Terrence Crawford to win, it's going to be a very, very I, I think it's going to be a very good overall boxing match, and I'm hoping that Jose Benavidez is really taking this fight. I mean, he should. Well, you know, it, it, it's kind of stupid to say, you know, you hope a fighter's taking the, um, um, a fight seriously as big as this, but you'd be surprised. A lot of fighters don't take their fight seriously. You know, I'm really in this, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping to see what we've been hearing about for this kid from this kid about this kid for the last eight years literally you know like this is the biggest fight of his career so if jose benavidez is the person they said he was going to be before he fought um uh, mauricio herrera then i want to see it in this fight because he got he has a you know i don't want to say conditioning but he seems to slow down later on in fights you know in regards to taking shots he's not supposed to on the ropes and all that um don't be surprised if Terrence Crawford would have to fight his mandatory, which could be Caval. I'm going to learn how to pronounce his name. He's been fighting on ESPN. He is the top ring fighter, and it's very it's a very good chance he could be um, ordered to fight um, um, Colleton. I saw him fight before too. He's a Canadian fighter. He's a Canadian fighter, right here. He was on um um. Uh, David Lemieux last two cards but don't be surprised if uh, the WBO after October whoever wins between Terrence Crawford versus Benavidez orders Terrence Crawford to fight this mandatory which buys Terrence Crawford even more time now I'm not saying he's ducking um, 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 PBC fighters or PBC fighters is ducking him but hardcore boxing fans and media know there's a clear political divide they want to keep Terrence Crawford on ESPN as long as they possibly can to build him up to have one of those fighters from PBC at how PBC side have to come over. What PBC side is going to do is to keep their champions and fighters in house as long as possible to the point where they have no choice but to fight Terrence Crawford if he keeps winning and vice versa. 
Because right now at the 147-pound division, the keys are in Heyman's hands. In regards to Terrence Crawford, he's got to build his name up to the point where and call these guys like, look, we got to make this fight happen. Showtime and ESPN's got to work together. Terrence Crawford is not leaving ESPN. There's too much money involved in that. People understand that ESPN is owned by ABC. ABC is owned by Disney. They're not going to let him go without a, without a fight, you know? So if you think that, if you think like this, right, Terrence Crawford fights Jose Benavidez. The winner of that goes on the fight. The winner of this, which could be on the car. Like, I'm going to pay really close attention to this. One of these guys or fighting each other could be on that October card. In fact, when was the last time he fought? I saw this fight. I don't remember when, though. I saw his fight. Let's see. When was the last time he fought? Um, hold on one minute. We're trying to do a little bit of boxing math here. Why won't they show his record? What are y'all doing? In July. So he probably, he may not end up, he could fight before the end of the year. The point is, I'm saying that, um, um, Terrence Crawford could have his mandatory if he fights in October he could have his mandatory in February or March then that's where things really heat up because who is he going to fight in the summer of next year that's when after Jose Benavidez of course they're going to start calls if he wins of course they're going to be like okay well who do you want next and he can say well those guys over there they don't want to fight me blah 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 and then, you know, if the WBO orders his mandatory, then, you know, of course, they're going to say, well, he's got to, you know, uh, uh, fight his mandatory because he beat Jeff Horn for the belt. It's mandatory time, blah, blah. We all understand or you should understand that a unification with any of these guys trumps the mandatory. But I see the winner of Jose Benavidez versus Terrence Crawford versus, you know, one of these guys. And then after for the second half of, 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 of 2019, People are going to be like, okay, well, what's going on with Errol Spence and what's going on with Mikey Garcia if he's 147-pound champion by some crazy shit happening? You know, Keith Thurman, I'm not really – I don't never see Terrence Crawford versus Manny Pacquiao. That's a whole other video. So, I'm not – you know, Danny Garcia, Sean Porter, because it looks like the winner of Danny Garcia versus Sean Porter is going to be going on the fight Errol Spence or Mikey Garcia, whoever wins between that on pay-per-view. They're still trying to figure out what's going on with Mikey Garcia and uh, Errol Spence. So, yes, there's rumors that that fight's going to be pushed back to the end of the year. I mean, to, um, to uh, January or February, but that's not fully guaranteed yet. They're still trying to work it out. Um, I'm Tissue Controversy. This is Tissue Controversy Live. So expect for the fight to be announced soon. I mean, not soon. It's August the 28th, right? Yeah, it's going to be announced within the next couple of weeks. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, unless some crazy shit happens. I'm Tissue Controversy. This is Tissue Controversy Live. Please subscribe.